you have control over some of your character, but to actually be able to write, produce, direct, and see the project through to the end was like an eye-opener to me. It's all I want to do now. So that's your main focus for the future? It's not my main focus. Acting's always uh, going to be my first love, but I definitely see a path for me to be behind the camera. So you mentioned Vimeo. I'm not sure do you know if it's available in German? To it is. Yeah, yeah it is? Yeah. Okay. So everybody check out Vimeo and uh, My Soul to Take, right? My Soul to Take. Very good, your direct interview. And um, do you want to talk about any future project that you have up in your mind that you want to do maybe, or is yeah. it too early? You it's can. too early. Too early, okay. Then um, you want. I, ha I have a couple of things that I have in development right now uh, that I'm producing. I have a film coming out in the new year called Black Bags. It's a thriller. Uh, but the other stuff I'm not ready to talk about. Then you have to come back next year. I will come about. back. Yes, I'd love to. Okay, so uh, you mentioned um, you have a black belt. It's the second record, and um, you do your own stunts, so you have to prepare physically a lot as well for your roles. Just how does it uh, fit in your preparation, and uh, like when you're on set, you have to keep preparing and keep working out. Is it hard to uh, to keep both on track? It's just the same shape, yeah, like this. Yeah, I mean, but it's a part of the job. It. If you're playing an action hero or a, a she-wolf, in my case, forbidden, or a superhero, that's a part of the job. You just you, you figure it out. And I mean, the third season of Bitten was so intense um, that I prepped for like three months leading up to it because she becomes the pack alpha. She's she has to be strong. So physically, I worked on that for three months, and then maintaining it through the shoot. Um, it's not always easy because you're working. 17 hour days and you don't have time to do what you were doing prior to the show starting, but you do your best. That's all we can do. And with the 17 hour work days, wow, really exhausting. But I love it. This, I, there's nothing that I love more than being on a set. I would stay there forever if I could. Okay, then a good thing that you are directing now. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and, um, um, it's talking about yeah. small though. Yeah, to look at the notes, small though. Talking about small though. Um, how did you get uh, that role of Supergirl? Uh, um, so they have this thing called self tapes where you can put yourself on tape literally and send it in. Um, I was 19 when I got the audition for it and I just saw that it said Supergirl and I was like, oh, that must be his sister. I didn't know. I'm like, oh, maybe it's his girlfriend. I get to kiss Tom Um, No, I'm his cousin. That would be weird. Uh, so I auditioned, and then like months went by. I didn't hear anything. Um, and then suddenly I got a call that was urgent. They were like, you need to be in Vancouver tomorrow. Or sorry, Los Angeles tomorrow uh, to screen test. So I flew to LA. I had just sprained my ankle. So I flew to LA, there were three other girls there um, that they were considering for the role. We all went in in front of the network and did a few scenes, and then they brought us back out into the waiting room, which is all very stressful, and like, we should not all be in the same room, that just seems really, I don't know, unhealthy. Um, but then they walked into the room and they one by one asked the other girls to leave and asked me to stay. Of course, I'm like, well, I'm in trouble. They want me to stay. I did something wrong. I said something. Um, and then they asked me to stay one more night in Los Angeles. And by the next day, I got a call. You're Supergirl. In a week, you need to move to Vancouver. Oh, that's really short notice. Very short. And like literally a week from that day, I was in Vancouver in a harness in the air learning how to fly. <laughs> doing this. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, I was so young and just still so excited to be on set and to be around these actors I was watching. Um, it was very intimidating. It's like being the new kid in school. You don't know if they're going to accept you. I didn't know if you guys would accept me. Um, it was all very terrifying and I think until my even last day on that show I was worried I was going to get fired. Yeah, we all have this feeling sometimes, but you did yeah. a great job. Thank you. Um, so you said you watched the show before, you were a fan actually. Did, um, so how was it like to meet all your, like, I don't know, idols, but uh, the, the guys you, you loved on the yeah. show before? Not really idols, but I mean, it's like if you guys watch shows and then suddenly you're meeting the person or working with them, it just takes you a second to like, is this real life? 
Um, but everyone was very welcoming. And Allison, Kristen, uh, Erica, all of the women immediately were like, we got you. It was a very safe environment. And I mean, I met Michael and I was like, hey, this guy's crazy. Uh, but I absolutely love everybody. It was great. It was great, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, no bad experiences. <laughs> no bad experiences. Very good. Except when I passed out. <laughs> I was in the harness too long. They kept, really? Yeah, they kept me up there too long and uh, because they had never... Super bad sleep. Yeah, I, I literally was hanging in the air just out cold because they had never created a harness to have someone fly this way. So they developed one for me based on my costume that could be hidden. But what they created cuts off your artery. So if you're up too long, it just cuts off the blood flow. So that was scary. fun. Scary stuff. Yeah, it's a learning process for us all. Don't don't let her hang up there for too long. Okay. So uh, you said you uh, do you want to have? Oh, we have a question from your partner, please. Yes, I I've, I've been listening intently Hi. and. Um, I, I do have a question, because you were talking about um, encouraging women behind the camera and you were also talking about um, strong female characters and uh, Supergirl is a role model for a lot of people, just like Wonder Woman is or um, any female superhero really. How, how important was it for you or is it still that they are portrayed in the right way and do you even have a say as an actress? Great questions, thank you. Um, that's, that's, that's a bit heavy of a topic for me just because, like I said, I've been acting for 22 years and it was only just in terms of the other side of the camera, maybe six years ago I had my first female director. In all of that time I had never had one. And what's crazy is that unless it's in front of you, you don't realize you have that opportunity. You need the example. To leave. So the minute I had my first female director, I was like, oh, I, wait a minute, that's an option. I could try to do that. So after that, because the industry started to shift and the environment, I started having more and more female directors. And I, I grilled all of them about their process and what it takes. Um, and they all encouraged me to do it. I think it's important we have women behind the camera because we have a different perspective and it's always been very male-led uh, and as an actor you don't really get that much of a say, I mean it depends on, I mean if you're Angelina Jolie, you get a, you get a say, <laughs> but the rest of the time you don't really have the opportunity. So getting behind the camera, allowing you to take control of those stories, I think we're seeing more and more women doing that, and it's incredible. And it's changing the landscape. Well, thank you for being one of the women we can look up to now. Thank you. I hope to continue to be. I'll keep trying. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> So your role is Supergirl again, um, you didn't know who Supergirl was, you just uh, admitted, but um, did you, when you prepared for it, did you um, then research something and you thought I have to bring this point especially to the table, is was there something you wanted to bring to that character that had been portrayed before on film, but also had been uh, drawn a lot in comics and stuff? I, I did, so the question was, since I didn't know who she was, I'm sorry. Um, I did the research right before I, I went in for the screen test, like I had a, a, a bit of time. What I saw of her in the comics um, wasn't what I wanted to portray, or portray. Uh, when I saw Helen Slater, it's more what I wanted to do. She, um, Look, in the comics, she's very sexualized, and uh, I was a young girl, and the wardrobe on the show, I, I understood what it was there for, but I was uncomfortable. And I didn't have a voice to say, I I'd rather not, you know, wear a crop top and daisy do shorts. Um, but to counter what they had me wearing, I tried to make her a strong character, uh, that she was confident in who she was, It was important for me that the young girls watching understood that she had a mind of her own. 
and she could stand her own ground. I mean, she could fly and Tom Clark couldn't. So she already had that above and beyond him, which is also why they would have to occasionally give me amnesia so I couldn't save people because I could get to them before him because Tom wasn't going to fly. Um, so that was a bit of a, a, a tricky part of the show because I could do everything before him that they just conveniently had me missing. Um, but I, it was, to answer your question, important for me to show that she didn't need anybody. They had written her very stubborn. She was a young character, which I was young, so that's fine. But all I wanted the audience to know was that she had a mind of her own. She was strong, and she was on her own path. Really good. Thank you. Um, so we have a new Supergirl, and you've been a part of that show as well, as a villain. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about your experience uh, being with uh, Melissa on set and uh, uh, how do you like her version? Yeah, so um, when I, I heard that they were doing a Supergirl show, I was thrilled. Like I know a lot of people were wondering why I wasn't doing it or you know, I'm, I must be upset about it. Uh, but they actually let me know in advance that they were going to be doing it and going in a different direction. And that's all I wanted. I just wanted her to have her own show, whether it was me or not. And um, one of the producers said, we'd love to have you on the first season. It's like an acknowledgement that you are okay with it. And I said, I would absolutely love to, as long as I can be a villain and look completely different. So they came up with Indigo, which is the character I played, which is a knockoff of Mystique. Um, but we had a lot of fun. Melissa was great. Uh, it, it was odd when I first got the script. My habit was to highlight Kara's line. So like, no, that's not me. Uh, but it is, it's more fun to be a villain. So and you get to do crazier things. You're not in a box. When you're a superhero, people have a certain expectation. When you're a villain, you can go crazy. And it's better. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're nearing the end of the panel already. I have two last questions. <laughs> we are a um, completely different topic. Um, it's the most wonderful time of the year, and I want to know what's your favorite Christmas movie and Christmas tradition? <sighs> um, favorite Christmas movie? Probably Tim Burton. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Nightmare on Christmas? Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. I should say Nightmare on Elm Street, totally different. <laughs> good movie as well. <laughs> Which is also good. I'm a huge Tim Burton fan. Very excited about the Wednesday show that just came out, uh, that our creators from Smallville created. So I'm hoping I'll make that work out for me. Um, but yeah, that would be my favorite Christmas movie. My favorite tradition? I don't really have a tradition. Being with family. Yeah, that's tradition. That's tradition. Yes. Yeah, my niece and nephew are getting older, so it's nice to experience Christmas with them. Okay. That's such a boring answer. No, no, it's not being with family is the most important answer. Okay, yes, that's my answer then. So, and the last question would be, um, the last thing that happened to you that was really inspirational to you and that you want to share with, with all of us? Being here? That's good. Really good. So, no, you guys are amazing. So thank you for we're going to do a selfie now on stage with you guys, so you can get up and wave your hands if you'd like. Everyone's still asleep. So <laughs> you woke him up. So. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys want to do a video too? Okay, but you gotta be loud. We gotta Woo! look like we're cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Pretty good, so give a Thank huge you. round of applause to Nora and the Board of Smaller Pictures and the Director of the Green, Mike Thank you for being here. Thank you for